This is a practice video for the kinematic unit, and it's on how to use and solve problems with those equations that were in the lecture video. The method I'm going to teach you is kind of a fun method, and it's called the PAVE method. A colleague of mine uh, and I, we came up with this, and it really was very helpful for our students. It paves your way to success with solving problems in physics. And so P stands for picture. Wherever possible, just draw a little picture down. I'm not a very good artist, but, you know, it works, stick figures and whatever what works for you. A stands for axes. Very simple arrows up, down, left, right, whatever the direction of the object is. V, list your variables. So all the variables, what VF is or VI or A. E stands for equation, any of the equations that you think would be beneficial to solve the problem. And then, of course, S, substitute, and then solve. And I'm going to show you how to use these in just a bit. Now, let's just review the equations that we are going to use for kinematics. Well, we have our very simple equation, average velocity is displacement over time. And we'll use this one any time where you have a velocity that is not changing and there's no acceleration. There is acceleration, then we get to our kinematics equations that we solve for at the end of our lecture. And Vf equals Vi plus At, final velocity, initial velocity, acceleration times time. We have D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. And uh, lastly, uh, we have our VF squared, final velocity squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Um, one final thing is what's great to know if we are in free fall, if we're falling freely, we know already the value for A because that equals G. And in the metric system, that is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Sorry, I squished all that in. Now let's look at our first problem. A car traveling at 6 meters per second is uniformly accelerating at a rate of 3 meters per second squared for 15 seconds. What is its final velocity? Well, we're going to use our PAVES method. So we have our picture. Well, I have a nice picture there. A lot better than I can draw. Axes, it's going in this direction. Variables, well, what do we have? We have our 6 meters per second. That would be our initial speed. That's what it's initially going. Uniformly accelerating at a rate of, that's the acceleration. Also check the unit. That's the unit of acceleration. 3 meters per second squared. And then we also have 15 seconds, which is a time. Okay. So that's our variables. Now let's look for, oh, one more thing I forgot. We are looking for final velocity. I kind of like to do that. It's what we're looking for. Spell it out. What equation has all these in it? If you look, Vf plus equals, excuse me, Vi plus At. And now we're ready to substitute. Or as a good friend of mine used to say, let's plug and chug. Okay, so we have Vf equals my Vi, which was 6 meters per second plus A, which is 3 meters per second squared, well, that's a 2, times 15 seconds. Now, I really don't have a problem with you leaving out units as long as you don't forget at the end. However, at the beginning, it's kind of nice to have them. Just to make sure that this, you know, second cancels out here, so you have meters per second and meters per second and all this hunky-dory here, okay? So we have 6 meters per second plus 15 times 3, okay, so that would be 45 meters per second, all right, and then our final velocity then is 51 meters per second, okay, and oftentimes we would have a direction for, for velocity, but because it's going in the same direction and we don't really, they didn't really specify what that is, it's okay not to list it. Okay, our next problem. How many seconds would it take a boat to accelerate from 13 meters per second to 26 meters per second over a distance of 1.25 kilometers? Well, using our PAVES method, draw a picture of our boat. It's nice that I put one nice one in there, isn't it? And we draw in the direction, axes. You'll see where the importance of the axes come in a little bit. Now variables. So we're looking for how many seconds. We can start actually with T equals question mark. Would it take a boat to accelerate from 13 meters per second? That would be my initial velocity, 13 meters per second, 
to 26 meters per second would be my final velocity over a distance of 1.25 kilometers. Now, units should all be in the same kind. So since there's meters up here in the meters per second, we really should put the distance in meters as well. So instead of 1.25, I'm going to put 1,250 meters because there is 1,000 meters in one kilometer, okay? All right, well, what, do we have some kind of equation we can help out with this? And that might take some doing, so let's look and see what we got. Now, there is another way to do this with one equation, but I really wanted to kind of show you how to do something where you can maybe use two different equations to solve it. So I'm going to write down this first equation, vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. And you're saying, well, why are you using that? Because <laughs> I'm looking for time and this doesn't have time in it. But I thought it would be nice if we found the acceleration here. Okay, so um, acceleration would be found by plugging in, oops, I'm sorry, 26 meters per second squared equals 13 meters per second squared plus 2 times A times that 1250 meters, okay? All right, so when we go through and do, and do all your math and do everything out, comes out to be 0.2 meters per second squared. So just plug in the numbers in your calculator and you're able to get that. So 26 squared minus, no, oh, well that was an equal sign, minus 13 squared divided by 2 times 1250. Now we can use that to plug and chug, as I say, in our very easy equation, the VF equals VI plus AT. So we have our I'm not too great at writing today. Our VF is 26. Our VI is 13. Our acceleration is 0.2. And we are looking for our time. Now, I did leave off the units there, but I can know that 13 from 26 is also 13. So that's meters per second equals 0.2 meters per second squared times t. So I just have to divide by 0.2 on both sides. But more importantly, I also wanted you to see that you are going to end up in seconds because this meter is going to cancel out with this one. And then one of the seconds cancels out, but you're still left with one. So when you go through and do 13 divided by 0.2, you get 65 seconds. So it's 65 seconds is the answer for the time of that boat, 65 seconds. Okay, now on to our third problem. It says a racing car traveling initially at 8 meters per second accelerates uniformly at 10 meters per second squared for 5 seconds. How far does it travel in this time interval? All right, so let's go to our PAVES method. So we draw a little picture of a car and we show the direction that it's traveling. So we have our picture in our axes. Let's write down our variables initially. So that's the VI is 8 meters per second. I'm going to try to be a little neater here on this one. Accelerates uniformly at, so that's our acceleration rate, 10 meters per second squared uh, for 5 seconds. So that we know the time is 5 seconds. How far does it travel in this time? So we're looking for D. Well, let's see. Do we have an equation that has D in it, V, I, A, T? And we do. It's D. So now we're going to write that down. Equals V, I, T plus 1 half A, T squared. Okay. So now let's just, like I say, plug and jug. Equals, so you have 8 meters per second squared times your time, which is 5 seconds, plus 1 half 10 meters per second squared times your time, which is 5, well, that's a parenthesis, 5 seconds squared, okay? So we have 8 times 5 is 40. The seconds cancel out. I'm left with meters, plus half a 10 is 5. And then we have 5 squared is 25, so 25 times 5 is 125. And let's make sure the units work. This is second squared, that's second squared, so they cancel out, you're left with meters. You can add meters with meters very nicely. And that's very important. Units really can tell the story if you're on the right track. So we get a total of 165 meters for my race car. 
Now we have this problem of a baseball hit straight in the air with an initial velocity of 38 meters per second. How long does it stay in the air back to the original height? And how high does it go? So the great example of where axes are very important. So we have our picture of our baseball, and we know that the baseball is hitting, hits hit straight up into the air, right, like that. Okay, so we have our picture and axes. Now let's look at our variables. Initial velocity, well, it spells it out right there for you. So we're going to have VI is 38 meters per second. How long does it stay in the air? Back to its original um, height. So we want to know T, and that's the total time T. So let's look at that, and then we want to know how high did this go, and that would be our D. Okay, so those are our things. Well, one thing is when you hit some, any anything, or throw anything straight up in the air, okay, there is a point up here, its highest point, where then after that point it'll start going back down. And so what you can think about is it has initial velocity here. At the highest point, the final velocity is zero. So the final velocity is zero there. And, um, and then on the way back down, the initial velocity on the way back down would be zero, and then the final velocity would be well, its original. One other thing we know about in this problem is we know the acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? All right. So what are we going to do here? Let's look for the time. Okay? And so we have VF equals VI plus AT. Our final velocity at the highest point here, the highest point is zero. Initial velocity, 38, plus acceleration times time, Oops. which we're looking for. So when I bring that over, negative 38 divided by uh, negative 9.8, so we get a time of 3.9 seconds. But that's not the total answer. It takes 3.9 seconds to go from here all the way up to the highest point and then 3.9 seconds to go back down again. So the total time is 3.9 times 2, or 7.8 seconds. Now to find B, how high does it go, we are going to use our distance equation. So we're going to use our for part B. I made the screen a little too small on this one. Sorry about that. D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. So since I ran out of room, I'm, you're going to be on your own here to plug in. But let me just show you. So you would put your VI, your initial velocity, 38, times T. Now, you don't use the 7.8, okay, because how high does it go? It only took half the time to go to its highest point or the 3.9. So you would put 38 times 3.9 plus 1 half A. Please don't forget the negative sign. This is very important, negative 9.8 times 3.9 squared. If you don't have the negative sign, you're going to get a whole different answer. Um, and the final answer, when you do plug in in that equation, you'll get 73 meters. Okay? Okay, here we go. This will be a little better, and the screen's a little better. Um, an adult kangaroo can jump as high as 1.8 meters. With what initial velocity must a kangaroo leave the ground to reach this maximum height? So there we have our picture. You see, I, I'm really trying to get around my really lousy picture uh, drawings. But so there we have a kangaroo, and it's jumping up as high as 1.8 meters. So we know that it can go a total distance of 1.8 meters. So that's one of my variables. There's my axes. With what initial velocity? That I am looking for that. Okay. Do we leave the ground to reach this maximum height? There's something else we know. We know the acceleration of gravity. It's still negative. I know even if it's jumping up, the acceleration of gravity is downward. It's slowing you down on the way back up as you're going up. All right. Uh, there's one other thing we do know. We know if it says the adult kangaroo can jump as high as. If the dunk kangaroo can jump, 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 and then the maximum height's 1.8. Why? Because it's going to start coming down. That means at this point, at the highest point, the final velocity is zero. Well, we have one equation that has a VF, an A, a D, and a VI in it, and it has no time, and that is our VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And now we're just going to plug in chug. So we have 0 equals vi squared 
plus 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared, oh, I'll keep writing the units, times distance 1.8 meters. And notice for the units for a second, you'll have meters squared per second squared, and then you're going to be taking the square root because when I bring the vi over, it's negative, so the negative signs cancel out. Don't worry, you won't be taking the square root of negative numbers ever in physics. Um, and then we take the square root of meters squared per second squared, you get meters per second. So to just plug out in that math in your calculator, uh, the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 1.8, is, let's see, I have to do that out in my little calculator here, <laughs> 2 times 9.8 times 1.8, and we are going to take the uh, square root of that, and you get 5.9 meters per second, and it's 5.9 meters per second, and if the direction was asked, it would be up. All right, here's our final one, and of course it has to do with graphing, my love of graphing. Okay, a car starts from rest and accelerates at a rate of 4.5 meters per second squared. I think for this problem, let's just make it as easy as we can. Let's make that 2 meters per second squared. We're going to make a distance time table and graph for the first 5 seconds, and then a velocity time data table and graph for the first 5 seconds. So, let's see what we have here. Um, we're going to have time and distance. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my data table. Uh, before we do that, well, let me follow my PAVES method. We have our car. It's accelerating from rest. That means VI is 0. There's my acceleration of 2. Um, and let's see what we got. We're going to use an equation, VIT plus 1 half AT squared. The great thing about this equation is when you're starting from rest, this just goes bye-bye. So, or to find our distances in this table, we're going to take one half of two and put in whatever time squared. So that would be zero. One squared is one. Half of two is one. So we have one. Then we have two squared is four. Four times one is four. Okay, three squared is nine. Nine times one, nine. That's why I use the two. It's pretty easy, right? Because half of two is is one. And so we have 4 squared is 16, and then 5 squared is 25. Okay? So that is um, what we're going to have. And now if we just graph that, you would get, if you go 0, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the time, and for the distance, it would look like a nice parabolic curve because it's showing the acceleration. That's the what the acceleration is shown in a distance time graph, a changing slope, so parabolic. Okay, if we make a velocity time data table and graph for the first five seconds. So we're going to do that. Now, what the you might want to do here is say, oh, well, distance over time is velocity. So 1 over 1 is 1, and 4 over 2 is 2, 9 over 3, and 16 over 4. And that would make sense, but it would be wrong. Okay, so if you are looking for the velocity and you are accelerating, you have to account for that. So to find the velocity, you have to use a velocity acceleration equation. So here again, this is zero. So we have VF, your final velocity, which really is what this is, final velocity. Oh, I guess I better get better and put my units up here in the tables, you know, because I'm the one who always gets mad when people don't do that. And we're going to go, uh, let's just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So acceleration times time. So we're going to give 2 meters per second squared times the time in each one. So 1 times 2, we have 2. And then we have 2 times uh, 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay? And we got that simply by our equation here. Now, if we graph that, if we graph the time and the velocity starting from at what we would have for this is a slope, an upward slope, and it says, what is the slope of this graph? If I did rise over run, okay, 
So, well, I guess I never did put a zero, zero in. I apologize, but there would have been a zero, zero in. I could do any two point, any points at all. And that rise over run at any, any area here, the slope of that equals the acceleration and the slope would also yield you two meters per second squared. Because that is what the slope of a velocity time graph gives you. So you, we really intermixed our kinematics equations with graphing and we'll see a lot more of that. So now I'll have some practice ones for you to do as well.